I realized that I kind of just like abruptly ended. Didn't really talk much about my diagnosis that I got yesterday. So it is Kylie's preschool graduation day. This is a big deal. We're just waiting in the car for it to be time to go in, huh? And I'm having anxiety because I asked the teacher, is she supposed to dress up or should she wear a red shirt? And the teacher said, have her dress up. And so I did, and she's literally like one of the only kids that dressed up and everybody else is in their red preschool shirt, so. So that's frustrating. But I literally like dropped my camera and I'm gonna do it again. Guys, I get so embarrassed about filming in public. Like I'm just in my car, but there's parents like walking in. And when I have it up like this, like you can tell that I'm recording something. I shouldn't care. Like for all they know, I could be FaceTiming someone and even if they did know I was recording, I shouldn't care. But I like seriously get so insecure and embarrassed about this. Maybe I'll just film from this flattering angle anytime I'm out in public. Let's mow the lawn! Get bumped! I film on my phone a lot of the time. So, if you're wondering what I film with, it's either this or my DSLR. I do have a vlogging camera, but it broke like shortly after I got it. And it's, honestly, it's old. I only got it because I really liked the um, style of it, but it, it's like years old. So uh, the camera on this is probably honestly better than my old vlogging camera. Anyway. Look at them guns, boy! But this still needs a lot of work. This still needs a lot of work. And there's my short little stubby legs that I'm really insecure about. I'm very not well proportioned. My legs are way shorter than my body. Like, my body's super long in proportion to my legs, if that makes sense. Anyway, insecurities. Insecurities. Short little legs and long body. But when I stand like this, you can't really tell. All right, <laughs> let's go mow the lawn. This bra though, super cute. I love it. And I like this top too. And honestly, I've been working my butt off uh, to lose the weight that I gained with my messed up thyroid that I have my appointment for tomorrow. Anyway, yeah, so um, I haven't worn this top in a really long time because it didn't really fit me. It's still a little tight, <laughs> but we're getting there. You're getting there. Guys, mission complete. This is that hill I was talking about. It's deceiving. It is a lot steeper than it probably looks. And then the front is a giant hill too. Uh, but just finished just in time i think there's a storm a brewing it's perfectly fine here storms are coming it's pretty magical too because on my phone because i'm into nerdy stuff oh yep here comes the clouds uh the pandora station i listen to sometimes has video game remixes and as it started getting dark and those clouds started rolling in the song of storms from zelda started playing I was like, oh my God, it's magical. Anyway, all done. So today was the big day that I finally got to go to see the endocrinologist about my thyroid. Now I really meant to vlog before I actually went to the appointment, but I kept forgetting. This vlogging thing's still kind of new to me, so you'll have to forgive me for forgetting. I might, I snapped a little bit about it on Snapchat, so I might put in some footage of that here. Or maybe not. <laughs> we'll just see. But it went well. Um, I finally have some answers. Turns out that I have Hashimoto's disease and hypothyroidism, but yeah. Well, I'm looking like a snack this morning. <laughs> I just wanted to 
and then I'll talk for a minute. I realized that I kind of just like abruptly ended. Didn't really talk much about my <clears throat> like diagnosis that I got yesterday. Last night I had a little bit of like, I guess struggling a little bit last night, like when I was laying in bed. Just because uh, like being diagnosed with Hashimoto's, like it's not a huge deal. It's it's something that because I got diagnosed and now I'm on medication, like it sh it's not really a dangerous thing. So especially with my whole like codependency, I don't want anyone to feel a certain way. So I like make sure that they know like, oh, I'm like, yeah, this is good news. And I've always done that. And it usually leads to me having meltdowns and stuff because I'm not allowing myself to like acknowledge or feel the negative uh, feelings that I might have on something. Like, for example, I had jaw surgery a long time ago. And when I had that done, I remember everyone would ask, like, how are you doing? How are you doing? And I'd just be like, I'm doing good. I'm feeling good. Healing's going good. But I was almost just like in denial of the stuff that sucked. And it, it led to me ha having a giant meltdown where I just, yeah, I just all the bottled up stuff just had to come spilling out. And so I'm trying not to do that as much. And I'm especially with this whole codependency thing, trying to be more honest about like my feelings on it. So like I am when I say like I'm doing good, that's the truth. Like, I'm glad that I have a label to put with how I've been feeling because regardless of the label, like, I was feeling these bad things anyway. So, like, having the label is only an improvement because then I can do something with that. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it doesn't change the fact, like, the things that suck. The fact that Hashimoto's is a lifelong autoimmune disorder, that disease, I mean, that I can't get rid of, I can treat the hypothyroidism that is a result of the Hashimoto's disease, but I will always have Hashimoto's disease. It means that I'm more prone to developing things like type 1 diabetes, lupus, all of these other things. And so it, there are things that suck about it and I'm allowed to be honest about that and, and be upset and then move on with my life. So it's good, but it is a little bit of like a scary thing like I've always had I've gone to the doctor for things before and like I have a heart murmur it's called mitral valve prolapse where basically like one of my valves doesn't always like close because when your heart pumps it like opens it closes with the blood flow and sometimes it doesn't close it gets stuck open for a second and you get like regurgitation they call it of blood and it causes your heart to skip a beat so I've always had that and that's probably like the most serious thing I've ever been like diagnosed with but even that they're like it's not a big deal it doesn't change your life just live your life and we'll check it again in like 10 years or whatever but like this is like the most real kind of like severe thing that I've been diagnosed with that won't go away and actually the mitral valve prolapse like will affect my medication because like it's it I don't know there's just a lot of things that are I'm a little bit scary about it so I just thought I'd try being honest and just talking to you guys about it because again the whole oh let's not be codependent let's not try to control how everybody feels about things let's not try to make sure that nobody knows the negative things because if they do then they like I'm just trying to do better but it's hard because I don't want people to feel I don't want people to feel like I'm trying to be like dramatic or I am don't want other people to feel uncomfortable or like worried. I don't know. Like, I don't know. So yeah, there's that. I had to take my first dose today uh, to help with the hypothyroidism. So I'm really excited to see if that's going to improve how I'm feeling. I'm optimistic. It's called Lex... Lex uh, it's called levothyroxine, I guess is how you say it. But that's like a really common hypothyroid corrector. So if you have hypothyroidism, you probably are on it even. Or if you have it, like they may suggest you take it. So 